Mark Twain once said, the man who does not read has no advantage over the man who cannot read. This quote inspired today's guest so much that he started reading intensively and he authored over a dozen books. Dr. V. Raghunathan is an academic author, columnist, and a hobbyist. He has a PhD in finance from IIM Calcutta. He's currently an adjunct professor at the Schuller School of Business, York University, Toronto, Canada. He's a former professor of finance, Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, former president, ING Vaisya Bank, Bangalore, former CEO, GMR Varalakshmi Foundation, India, and former director, Shulish School of Business, India campus. He was also a visiting professor at SDA Bokoni, where he taught behavioral economics for nearly 25 years. He has served on various boards and committees of corporates, Ministry of Finance, SABI, BSE, and NSE. Dr. Raghunathan has been named one of the top 50 management thinkers in India and the Indian diaspora for three years in a row, starting in 2013. He's the co-author of Beyond the Call of Duty, as well as Duryodhana, Locks, Mahabharata and Mathematics, Ganesha on the Dashboard, The Corruption Conundrum, and Other Paradoxes and Dilemmas, Don't Sprint the Marathon, and a bestseller, Games Indians Play. He is also a longtime columnist, most notably for the Economic Times, and has written over 500 papers and articles. He also writes a blog for the Times of India and formerly worked as a cartoonist for the Financial Express. So to learn how not to sprint, but to run the marathon of life effectively, I would like to welcome Dr. V. Raghunathan. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amrita. It's a pleasure being here. So, sir, um, I just wanted to jump right in and ask you, you've taken up such myriad roles in your career, you know, of an academic, of an author of a columnist, cartoonist, CEO. So uh, one, which role do you like the most? And two, how was the journey so far? So which role you like the most is a difficult question to answer. It's like asking a parent, which kid do you like the most? Because <laughs> I would have done none of those things if I had not been enjoying them, okay? Correct. My 20 years at I am Ahmedabad, teaching some of the best students in the world, not just the country, uh, was a fascinating experience in itself. Then running an actual bank rather than being a consultant or on the board alone, actually running a bank for four years was another high of a very different kind, very different challenges, very different uh, 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 kind of uh, experience, which I would not exchange for anything else. Yeah. The 15 years after that, uh, and a part of it parallelly, uh, you know, in some other roles like director of the Schulich School or GMR Industries and so on. But throughout, I was also heading the GMR Foundation, which was a large foundation working uh, in about uh, 15, 16 locations in India, uh, about 25 locations, 15, 16 states in India oh in God. the field of uh, education, health and uh, uh, community work, basically. So all of these have been fascinating experiences because here I was dealing with children to whom I could make a difference. Correct. In I am Ahmedabad, you don't make a difference to the child. The kid is so bright, he will do well with or without you. Correct. Whereas here, you know, where there was an engineering college with 4,000 students and degree college, schools and so on. It was a different kind of an experience, which again, I would exchange for nothing. Mm -hmm. And my journey as an author, yeah has been a hobby come uh, 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 pleasure, you know, yeah. and a cathartic process because, you know, living in India is a fascinating country. You don't have a minute mm -hmm. to get bored, uh, but at the same time, it's fascinating and yet infuriating in many ways. <laughs> so you, you need a cathartic process. That is what brought the columnist out in me okay. as well as then I started writing books. So I've, I, I have been a regular uh, columnist, except now I'm reaching a stage where I wonder you know, whether time is better spent now at least, because all these years I was terribly busy, uh, you know, uh, traveling and doing all kinds of other things. Mm -hmm. So I have to catch up on the backlog of reading in life. So I devote a little more time. So my writing columns has come down a wee bit, okay. but my book writing has gone up. In fact, my forthcoming book on behavioral economics with Penguin Random House is a very important book that uh, I'm looking forward to. So yes, so yes, there, there are no favorites. They're, they're all favorites in different genres. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And of course, my law collection has been a different eye of all uh, yes. from any yes. of these because uh, that's been a parallel uh, process 
uh, over the last 40 years practically or 38 years practically mm -hmm. and uh, you know which has given me a very different kind of a high it's a very parallel aspect of the personality uh, in some circles i'm better known for my log collection than as an academic or author or a columnist or a ceo or anything else so yes uh, i think all of these are amazing experiences which i would not want to trade off with anything else oh i completely agree and uh, it's it's a very beautiful journey that you have uh, you know transversed and i've i've just read about it but one question that comes to my mind is that what made you choose this? Like, was there a particular decision uh, or was there an incident that made you choose a particular career path as an author or as an academic? What made you choose these okay. paths? Yeah, good question. You see, I was, uh, you know, most of us are born in a narrow band of IQ, so to speak, 90 yeah. to 110. Right. The 160 IQs are few and far between, okay? <laughs> so I was one of these average, let us say, you know, the 120 IQ types, okay? Uh -huh. Now, and large majority falls in that category. Mm -hmm. So I learned very early in life that if I had to distinguish myself in any way, whatever way, because I was no Sachin Tendulkar or a Mozart who had some great gift uh, the moment I was born, which I knew I had to pursue, nothing of the kind. Mm -hmm. I did my BSc accidentally. I did my MBA accidentally. I went for my first job accidentally. I, in fact, started my life as a naval officer, yeah. uh, which I quit during the uh, 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 training period itself. Mm -hmm. So the, the one thing I had learned very early in life was that there was no substitute to hard work. Yeah. Because I was also only 17 when I did my undergraduation, which means mm -hmm. I was not mentally very developed yet compared to the 19, 20 year olds, maybe. Okay. So I decided that if I had to stand up to them or do better than them, the only way out was no matter what came my way, do it well and devote enormous hard work on it. Mm -hmm. Because often we say that, oh, you know, uh, yeah, if you're a Mozart or a Tendulkar, good for you. But most of us are not. That doesn't mean that we let our life go and drift as it is. Mm -hmm. So I just learned to work hard. And then I said, there's only one lifetime. You don't want to do the same thing from the day you join till the day you die. So, <laughs> you know, that's how I you know picked up different things, put a lot of effort in each of them. Each right. of them has been uh, uh, taken to a decent conclusion in some ways, mm -hmm. you know, uh, reaching all the way the best you could under the circumstances. In, you know, I, I may not be an internationally acclaimed academic, but in India, I was reasonably well known. I mm -hmm. may not be the world's best author, but yes, I've written competent 10 books with Harper Collins and uh, Penguin alone, mm -hmm. uh, apart from a few others. Uh, yes, I have, uh, I'm not the best columnist in the world, but I've written enough columns to be called a columnist today. And it's the same with whatever else I've done. You know, I've reached the highest level as a CEO and I've, uh, be, I've made a mark as a collector, for example. So this is, I am a living proof that you can be very average, but do as well as you can. Exploiting your potential is what mm -hmm. life is all about. And I think I've been doing it and I continue to do that. Wow. So uh, basically your talisman is to take up the opportunity that comes your way and make sure that you put in as much hard work as possible and as to see it through. Me. That's it. Yeah. That's the I'd only see policy. True. Never yeah. leave anything off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that is That's important. Uh, sir, so you mentioned that you had uh, a term as a professor at IIM and you said that the students were really smart. So uh, since there were so many brilliant students, who are the students that stick out the most? And what traits do you remember about these students? There are quite a few names. Uh, but some of them have done very, very well. Raghuram Rajan himself, for example, was the RPA governor, was a student there. Okay. And I do have a memory of him in the class because he was so bright, you couldn't, uh, you know, overlook him as, mm -hmm. and, and I, you know it will be unfair to name only a few names because there were quite a few who were extremely bright you know people who have started so many startups whether it is knockery.com or uh, you know make my trip and so on many of them are from I'm mm -hmm. and many of the students I do remember okay uh -huh. uh, so and obviously when you teach ch children who are that bright you see I was myself 26 when I joined as an assistant professor in I'm Ahmedabad Okay. okay. And I taught there for 20 years. Uh -huh. So I was barely older than students and some of the students would be older than me, you know, right. even as I was teaching. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> so it was so that 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 was another aspect of hard work. If you are not hard working, you could not stand in the classroom and face the class of sixty brilliant students who could trip you any time. And <laughs> if you are close to their edge, they'll want to trip you. You know, it's it's yeah. fun to see a professor falling <laughs> flat on his face. And if you want to avoid that fate for yourself, you've got to work doubly hard. Correct. If others work five hours for every session, I had to work ten hours for every session. Wow, right. So <laughs> I understand. So yeah, it was a fun. It was fun time and challenging time, and uh -huh. that is what made us, uh, you know, rigorous uh, teachers in many mm -hmm. ways. I I get it. If you, I, I guess, if you have a task at hand and you don't put in enough effort for it, uh, you're just going to either be very nervous <laughs> to do it. or you're going to yeah. just be behind the entire crowd <laughs> so yeah. uh, yes, sir a lot of people are now questioning whether mba is very necessary because there are a lot of college dropouts who start their startups and they are earning more than their peers in the industry so what is your take on this see first thing i would say is hmm. i entirely agree that uh, it's not as if every successful person in the world is an mba you know so Correct. get that out of the system straight away okay <laughs> at the same time we need to put in a word of caution because there's something called availability bias in behavioral economics okay which means we are often swayed by the news that we see too often or the information which is readily available we think that is a larger truth correct if i ask you do more people die of accidents or uh, or aids or common cold very often people will say accidents or aids whereas common cold is a large, by far the biggest killer that is because more news of eight deaths and accidental deaths come on page 3 and 5 of the newspapers yeah. than people dying of common cold okay Correct. unless it becomes a covid okay mm -hmm. that apart so which means that when the news media keeps on giving the stories of these successful startups we come to believe as if you just have to start a startup to become a big successful entrepreneur no mm. they don't tell you that one probably only one out of 500 entrepreneurs makes it that big yeah probably one out of 5000 entrepreneurs actually makes it to a unicorn hmm. so it's not that you just start a startup and the next stop is you know a billion dollar uh, valuation no it's right. not that so we do not tell children sufficiently that look yes entrepreneurship has a large positivity going for it and yet you have to be able to assess yourself hmm. okay do you want an unlimited upside or do you want to lock the downside hmm. okay so yes uh, 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 you know often an mba does that hmm. you know a typical mba who has a hmm. safe degree will take a safe job hmm. so the downside is taken care of you'll never die of hunger <laughs> but very likely you will not reach those uh, exalted uh, stratosphere of career okay uh -huh. very few end up doing that Correct. even every i am graduate doesn't end up doing that you know mm -hmm. there be only one in thousand who actually becomes uh, uh, even among i am graduates mm -hmm. you can count 10 or 15 unicorns whereas there have been tens of thousands of students who pass through i ams correct correct yeah. so one has to put this in perspective mm -hmm. and then say that yes ultimately it's a question of doing whatever you are doing diligently see if mm -hmm. by accident you are doing your mba anyway good for you correct but yes. if you haven't done your mba or if you didn't crack it into a good mba school it's not end of the world as we, as you mentioned the title of my book don't sprint the marathon yeah. a good mba is at best a good start in life in professional life okay. but what is a good start in a marathon whether you had a good start or not does it count in a marathon no it counts only <laughs> in a sprint and life mimics marathon in more ways than one in every aspect <laughs> so missing a good mba or missing a good iit is this is socially we have put a sense of a failure around these we mm. even treat children very differently who didn't crack an iit is a lesser mortal in the family okay. you know a kid who gets 72% marks we you know tell the kid don't tell the neighbors the percentage that you got just say mm. all is okay you know so we bring a sense of shame yes. into the kid correct Okay, and then we expect him to become a great entrepreneur, which is stupid, right? That is so, true. the thing is, we need, even as an educational system, mm -hmm. as a society, and as parents, 
we also need to teach our children to manage failure because if you can't manage failure you can't even aim at entrepreneurship true that is because true. entrepreneurship is probably if you try 10 things you may reasonably succeed in one and if you tried 100 things you may succeed in one big time but do you have the persistence to go through those 100 things that is where hard work counts and that is where persistence counts oh okay. these things are not told by media because yes. these are not they don't make good stories they may make good uh, morning chat with you on your uh, streaming of uh, <laughs> talks like these yeah. but that, that's not your newspaper uh, read which tells you yeah. that look it's not so easy to be an entrepreneur that is so true because uh, everyone feels like most of us feel that um, you know doing a job is difficult and starting up is so easy the way it is portrayed as you said in the media exactly and, and when uh, when you actually step into that role you realize that there are so many beatings that you have to take as a boss in comparison to the beatings you have to take as an employee because right. you are protected as an employee you get right. a salary monthly yeah, as i said downside is taken care of yes the downside is taken care of but once you are uh, there you know at the front line and you're just just getting all those right. uh, you know b- bombarding from the clients and what not everything is going wrong it is very important to have that persistence to have that mindset to go ahead if you don't have that mindset you're going to be stuck where you are or maybe you will quit and go back to doing a job yes. so and to link to your mba question in hmm. some ways having a good degree is like a parachute if right. you finish your degree at 22 there's hmm. no harm giving your next four or five years to get it out of your system that i tried my entrepreneurship bit if it seems to be catching traction then you could go with it if not you could always come back to a job Correct. so in a way a good degree is a decent parachute Hmm. but uh, you know but, but in the long term whether it is an iim degree or an spjn degree or a lesser school degree none of that matters so much yes. it matters for the first job not thereafter correct thereafter it is your hard work that's going to count and how much you put into that job is all that counts so true so true so true sir it's it's all about working and researching because if you don't keep on improving as a person and you exactly. don't gain knowledge it is not going to help you out that and for course. that i am are not the only last stop for an mba <laughs> you know you as long as you are learning because not, today is an age where we have learned to learn yes okay i i can actually do an mba just sitting here at zero cost only by googling correct so true as long as you're ready to learn <laughs> yeah, exactly so that's what comes oh, sir that's true so uh, moving on to the next question so there was an article recently that i read in the newspaper that mentioned that india is on the path to become technological advanced techno in a, in a few years so with the mindset that we have that you mentioned in games indians play do you think india will be the next silicon valley and people will not jump on the next opportunity to get a visa and go overseas what is your take on this you see my take on this is uh, that we need to view it with a sense of balance right first of all we cannot get carried away by the number of entrepreneurs or uh, even unicorns that india turns out mm-hmm. that is because indian population is 1.3 billion mm. okay now yes india uh, last year had about some you know i don't know the different numbers going around but 70 80 startups major startups of 1 billion dollar valuation or more yes hmm. now if you compare it with israel israel may be some 2025 correct but to congratulate india while the population of israel is 95 lakhs population of india is 130 crore <laughs> so per 1 crore population if you look at the number of entrepreneurs that india has generated Mm-hmm. or number of uh, unicorns that india has in the world so you know the question is if we look at any number of india in absolute terms will be the world's number 2 or 3 mm-hmm. number of plumbers india will be higher number of doctors number of engineers mm-hmm. number of electricians i mean if you have 1.3 billion populous population anybody will be larger in number okay correct but the way we play this and india has always to my mind and i've said it in my games indians play which you quoted that we are long on talk and short on action okay now these <laughs> entrepreneurs who are entrepreneurs are largely entrepreneurs despite the challenges that they face in india not because of it 
Mm-hmm. Our power cost is among the highest in the world. Oh. Difficulty of doing business in India is among the highest even today. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. So corruption is among the highest even today. We are among the most corrupt nations. So what is the country congratulating itself for on these entrepreneurs? Imagine if we were less corrupt, if we had ease of doing business, so many and if we had high quality education going around, and our our, our education for sixty percent of the population sucks completely. So that is government education, which where schools are operated even without teachers, or one class will handle three different classroom, three class, three class four, and class five in a single classroom. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now with these kind of things, we keep patting ourselves on the back. for political reasons for mileages to be had by somebody or something makes no sense if you really want, if you are truly caring about your country we mm. need to redu- work towards reducing corruption see the, the 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 current parties came to power on the whole platform of corruption if you remember yeah okay anna hazare's whole movement was about anti corruption yes but we have not even passed a lokpal bill in the last Seven years. So what are we talking about? Correct. So we are long on words and short on action. <laughs> Whatever India is achieving is highly laudable. Mm-hmm. My heartiest congratulations to every entrepreneur who has made it. But he or she has made it despite what India offers them, not because of what India offers them. So let us be very clear on that. That's true. That's true. If they continue, and this is true of all governments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is It's true of all other governments yeah. from 1947. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In 70 years, even today, 40 percent of Indians can't read and write. Truly, agree. Even today, 50 percent of India earns less than two dollars a day. <laughs> after <laughs> 75 years, so what are we talking? That is true. That is true. uh even i so as a professional every government is responsible we have reduced politics to only winning the next elections that's it public mm. good we don't have roads to walk on we don't have parks to walk in we don't have hospitals or government hospitals which really work or government education that really works we are the worst parameters on health we are the worst parameters on poverty we are the worst parameter on lactating mothers worse than some of the sub saharan african countries mm hmm hmm so it so is a long way to, to go worry about yeah. we have, things are grim and we we only play up the success <laughs> stories you know and anybody who doesn't talk about the success story is not a patriot correct today's definition is in fact i am so i will be called if you know depending on who this uh, uh, thing goes out to i'll be called a, a you know non patriotic character that i am not speaking good of india mm-hmm. but i can That's why road games Indians play. <laughs> that is true. We still have a long way to go. There is a lot of friction. Yeah, long that is way happening. to go. The world has shrunk. If anybody sees every world on the TV, you mm-hmm. look at uh, you know any uh, capital, even in Africa, their roads look so much better. Yes. Cleaner. Yes. Yes. That's true. We have a, yes. We talk about a clean India campaign, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, what is the real change on the ground? Whether it's Pune or Bangalore, you just go around and see the filth, <laughs> uncleared filth in the middle of the important segments of roads, which yes. are uncleared for days. So, so that's what I mean. We are long on talk, short on action, because uh, 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 you know three-letter words are easy to make. You know. <laughs> No, it's true. It's true. Whatever you said is so true. Uh, even professionals are getting paid so less. Uh, my road in front of my house is still dug up. It's been six months. Yeah, um, once they dig it for six months, you won't see anything happen. No, no, no progress at all. They will start seven bridges in the city, all the you know obstructing all the major roads without any side roads which is decent or travelable, and then they'll run out of money. Work will be stuck for three years. I mean, a bridge which should take not more than ninety days in construction takes up to four, five, six years. Correct. And once completed, the wait for some politician to come and cut the ribbon, and therefore it's waiting for six more months. Exactly. And then they dig it Because up again. They don't have time. So, <laughs> and we all of us accept it. If I put. Uh, uh, you know a talk like this there'll be 500 people who will be ready to come and uh, contradict me but when the government does nothing and the whole world is dug up you see very few voices raised against the local government yes yes w- what is going on 
we just learn to accept and adjust and uh, accept yeah and move on yeah. correct so we are there to troll the wrong causes hmm. but we aren't there to criticize the right causes right <laughs> there are lacks of trollers for uh-huh. all kinds of articles written or all kinds of uh, you know secularism suddenly has become a bad word today in india you yes. become so divisive hmm hmm whereas hinduism was nothing but secularism if you ask me <laughs> Yes. Hinduism was secularism. Correct, correct. I mean, everybody was accepted. Nobody mm-hmm. was hated. You could have one god. You could have hundred gods. You could go to temple. You need not go to temple. You could read Gita. You may not read Gita. Correct. But you are a Hindu, nevertheless. Mm-hmm. Which other uh, religion is that accommodating? That's true. You have to go to church every Sunday. <laughs> you have to only swear on Bible. whether you uh-huh. like it or not you have to go to mosque you have to pray five times a day hinduism has nothing of you right no 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 you just had to be a good human being that's all it said <laughs> <laughs> that is true that is true so well uh, i guess we have to uh, take action more than just uh, yeah, talking that's and that that is where we'll get to do in what like. we need to do that's right. it that's it now, what is my duty towards my immediate environment mm-hmm. do i speak up do i stand up for causes do i contribute constructively see everybody cannot contribute in every aspect correct but whatever has come to you by accident in that you contribute the best you can that's all i'm saying yes i'm not saying everybody has to be an activist mm-hmm. but a teacher must teach very well hmm uh you know an official in the uh, uh, rto office or land registration office should be honest and do the work properly correct so that's all that one is asking which is not too much to ask actually <laughs> yeah. just do the duties assigned to <laughs> so it is too much <laughs> <laughs> it does happen a lot that you go and yeah. get some work done and it doesn't happen but yes as long as people are honest and you know they work hard at their own duties that they've taken up voluntarily and no no point blaming yeah. politicians because they are a meta us yes. ultimately it is we who are also reflected correct. there correct so you know externalizing the problem is not going to help we mm-hmm. ourselves have to decide that i will be honest mm-hmm. let us not talk about all oh, the system is dishonest okay it is where they extort money from me i'll have to pay i have no option mm-hmm. but i will push against it and in my interactions i will remain honest correct you know so we we need to do that kind of a push otherwise we are very readily saying oh but everybody is dishonest so why should i be or yeah. i alone cannot change the whole world you know the two fatalistic statements our favorite <laughs> fatalistic statements what can i alone do correct correct or everybody is doing it so why should i do it hmm. if that is attitude india will never it won't even have a hope of changing in 500 years that's true that's so true yeah you have to start somewhere someone has to start somewhere you have to start from yourself somewhere from yourself, yourself. from yourself and if you begin maybe 10 other people just looking at you they learn exactly. how to exactly that as long as you make even a small impact it's uh, that's all it will if change. everyone impacts two people hmm. you'll be surprised how the geometric series proliferates two Correct. becomes four four becomes eight eight becomes 16 16 becomes 32 within yes. 10 iterations you you have the whole country's population covered correct correct that is true <laughs> so that's it still Maybe a long way to go <laughs> yep Uh, so sir i had one more question for you um, if you scroll through linkedin nowadays you see that apart from you know uh, the natural job that people are doing there are uh, other aspects that people are following uh, they are trying to um, you know do something new something earth shattering some uh, maybe somebody is writing a book somebody is doing a podcast parallelly somebody has to uh, show that they are different from the rest so um, i have a two part question for you is it important to join this race to you know look different and uh, have a very nice portfolio and how important is it to be acknowledged like this to be seen by a potential employer all right you see uh, i w- i am always a middle path guy okay anything in moderation is okay anything mm. which is obsessive or excessive Hmm. is usually not so okay okay right which yes. means which means that yes supposing you are an undergraduate mm-hmm. planning to apply for a master somewhere 
hmm. say in a US university or something. Yes, if you've had other dimensions to what you do, if you have taken up some causes, if you have, if you cleaned up your street in your region and if you made a podcast of it and put it up for a good measure or something else that you did, which was interesting, hmm. more than putting it up on the social media, it is doing these things which was important, okay? Right. And right. I would imagine, yes, if you have done them, there's no harm putting it. Correct. Okay. Mm. Because all said and done, even MBS tell you that if you don't do marketing, <laughs> you know, even an excellent product can fail. True, true. And whether we like it or not, if today's world is about social media marketing, so to speak, mm. maybe a little bit of marketing is inevitable. Correct. But, correct. but just sexing up your uh, uh, CV <laughs> is not what your innate abilities are all about. True. Mm. Okay. So I would put 80% emphasis on doing these multiple, multivaried kind of things. Mm -hmm. And maybe 20, 25% weightage on showcasing it on the social media. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the reality dawns on the potential recruiter also. For example, okay. when you, yes, sometimes they ask for your uh, uh, social media accounts and so on, okay. but they will really look at what you have actually done. Hmm. And if supposing you've done something which is uh, endorsed by someone else, US universities will take that very happily. And they'll say, oh, this youngster hmm. certainly has uh, you know, interest yeah. beyond. He's, he's only a BA sociology student, but he has gone into the community and done so many things. Correct. Okay. So mm -hmm. there's a difference between this sociology student and that sociology student. Mm -hmm. okay. So I would uh, put that 75-25 uh, kind of a balance on doing versus marketing. Right. As you mentioned before, that it should not be all talk and no action, but it should yeah. be most of it should be action. More and action less of talk. and some talk. Less talk. <laughs> some talk. <laughs> some talk at least because I've done it. So yeah. at least please, they close. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. So, uh, sir, as you're, you, you have an experience as a professor and a consultant. So, um, usually what happens is after a while, people hit a curve in their career, mid career. So there is absolutely no growth in that career. But when you switch, what happens is the, um, organization looks for somebody younger for a little less, you know, pay remuneration that they give. So, um, my, I have a two-part question. What would be the survival strategy for such uh, individuals? One. And second, how can the business owners or the corporations make sure that they retain such talent at the same time, you know, provide them enough remuneration and, you know, match the kind of money that they're looking for? You see, the answer to both of them is the same. Right. Which is investment in self. Hmm. Remain relevant. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I manage my website. Do you know I learned HTML online? Oh. <laughs> so I do all the editing myself. Oh my God. Okay. Uh -huh. I learned Urdu reading and writing online entirely on my own. Okay. <laughs> without joining any formal classes, only by Googling. Mm -hmm. No classes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the point I'm making is this plateau is often reached mm. because people stop investing in themselves. Mm. So you are a, in some ways, in a very lighter way, you are the machinery of yourself, which is earning. Correct. If you don't maintain the machine, if you don't upgrade its life periodically, <laughs> obviously there'll be an end to that life, right? Useful yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to keep investing in remaining relevant. Okay. Hmm. Supposing you were, it depends, you know, in every field, hmm. it may be different kind of a investment in self. Hmm. So I don't know what will be the right example to give here, but you know, even if I'm a professor hmm. in my own field, multiple things are happening. Hmm. Use of technology is multiplying. If I keep on giving a lecture on the blackboard with my chalk, no matter how good a teacher I am, I lose some grip hmm. on my audience. Correct. Because they want to relate to what is happening. Hmm. How do I teach them to learn on their own? Can I bring the web 
uh, you know, internet right into the classroom and say that, all right, we don't know the answer to this. Let us see if we can find it. So what right. I'm saying is this is also a kind of a self-discovery Correct. where you are teaching in a very different pedagogical plane, you know, <laughs> not what you have always been doing, doing for the last so many years. Hmm. All right. So it is investing in yourself, no matter which job you are in, hmm. you know, maybe you, you knew HTML, but how, did you learn Python at the right time? Hmm. Maybe Python is becoming old. Have you caught on to the next latest that is happening if you're a code writer? Hmm. So what I'm saying is uh, follow the latest trends. Correct. You can formally invest in yourself or you can informally invest in yourself. Hmm. Formal investment is proper getting a diploma, degree yeah. or whatever, online um, education parallel to your work life or whatever, or mm-hmm. just being so damn good Googling Hmm. That when there's a problem, the organization looks up to you. Hmm. Hmm. Then they will automatically pay you more. Correct. If you want to quit, they'll say, please don't quit. <laughs> but if you are one of the hundred ha- ha- have beens <laughs> where, who's easily replaceable, right? okay, you know, you are one demotivated employee, there's another demotivated employee, okay, you go, I'll get one more. So, you know, then it's a downward trend throughout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Correct. So I think both the questions that you ask, the answer mm-hmm. is the same. Mm-hmm. Invest in yourself. Yeah. Learn, learn, learn. In fact, your survival, even in business tomorrow, if you become an entrepreneur, you know, if you were only selling typewriters for the whole of your life, even Godrej went, went out of production. Correct. Because who uses a typewriter? Nobody does now. Yes. So... So today making a great fountain pen is not going to be very helpful. How many people write with it other than, you know, collecting it as a collector's item. (laughs) So you have to be relevant to the times. You have to upgrade yourself. So had had somebody in Godridge or Remington told them that, look, uh, writing style, uh, uh, the, the instruments are changing. We need to invest in PCs. Maybe they would have given IBM a run for their money, but no, they didn't. (laughs) that's true that's true that is so true so one has to keep, keep on upgrading and being relevant upgrading. in the market we talk about version 2.0 3.0 4.0 but never for ourselves <laughs> are you a version 2.0 of yourself yes are you a version 3.0 of yourself so never stop you learning are nothing but your experience correct you correct. are a sum total of your experience if your experience remains the same you remain yeah. stagnant true <laughs> so important you have to be relevant in the space because if uh, you keep on going with the same uh, attitude or the same knowledge that you had before you are going nowhere you're just going to be in the same place for See, a long time that is why time. there are very few jobs where hmm. new learning is usually not required supposing i have a driver at home a chauffeur hmm. Hmm. when he was 20 year old when i recruited him he used to drive a car hmm. today he's 32 he still drives a car correct okay so there's no upgrading required, hmm. except if I bought a better car, but hmm. that, that only makes his life easier. Okay. Correct. It doesn't make his life any more difficult. Hmm. It hmm. only makes it a Mercedes or a BMW, your life is only easier to drive. <laughs> yes, a little bit of risk goes up because if he bangs it, <laughs> my pocket is hit larger. Okay. Correct. But the point is, in these jobs, one may say, one may hmm. think that there is not a great deal of, how do I enrich? I'm only a driver. There's mm-hmm. one way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Another way to look at it is, you know, as a driver, are you the best driver in the city? Mm-hmm. If you are, supposing you can speak three, four languages, supposing you have learned all the politeness that, uh, that comes associated with the job and so mm-hmm. on. Tomorrow, if I don't want him, mm-hmm. I will endorse him to somebody good who will be willing to pay a premium for Correct. him or her. So even in jobs where we believe that there is no conventional upgrade possible. Hmm. In fact, yesterday, day before, there was a news item uh, of an auto rickshaw driver uh, who had uh, Wi-Fi and yeah. uh, all the magazines and laptop and uh, you know a small fridge with some soft drinks and uh, things like those. Okay? Correct. Now, he says people queue up for him. Hmm. They wait for him. Hmm. They fix time with him. <laughs> now, this guy, his next stop will be, he can ask six of his friends, if you give the same 
services those who mm. ask for me since i can't be there everywhere simultaneously i'll get some business to you for a small 2% uh, yeah commission for me correct they will get more business and he will be running a service correct know? so so what i'm saying is there's no such job where upgrade is not possible so true even, even in an auto rickshaw driver upgrade is possible right yes yes so it is it is important to upgrade it is important to look at yourself from a different perspective think how you can upgrade think how you yes. can upgrade that is the only thing that will distinguish you from others from the run of the mill interesting it's <laughs> it has made it is making me think like if even if a, an auto rickshaw driver can upgrade why aren't yeah. you looking for your own strengths Correct. so important Correct. sir uh, coming to your books you have written so many varied concepts you know made be corruption conundrum and other paradoxes and dilemmas uh, games indians play ganesh on the dashboard it is mostly based on psychology then locks mahabharat and mathematics it's you found a pattern between all no, three Gane- ganesh on the dashboard was about lack of scientific temper in india oh you see they're all on different themes but this yes, ganesh so on the ev- dashboard okay what we do is when you're buying a car Hmm. first of all people look at an auspicious day to go and get the delivery yeah okay right they will look at whether it is raw column when you are leaving home to go hmm. for taking the delivery hmm. then they will drive the car from the showroom straight to the balaji temple for having it blessed correct correct then for good measure they will stick a plastic ganesha on the dashboard hmm. all of this because we want the car to remain safe and accident free and so on correct and then we will drive without seat belt or put it on only when we see a cop there yes so where is our scientific temper our idea of god is not that he gave you brains enough to for someone to make seat belts mm-hmm. and for you to wear it mm-hmm. but we believe i will drive without seat belt but god should protect me if i get into an accident <laughs> so that is our scientific temper Correct. so that book is all about about that. scientific temperament yes lack of and scientific temper so um, so they're all different no i mentioned this because they, yes, that yes, was yes. not on psychology it was definitely so uh, yeah. as you said this is also a different team <laughs> than beyond the call of duty was uh, you know you beyond have the call of duty was you know these kids who were barely yeah. 17 18 19 though they were from our colonial masters yes mm. but that yeah. is not what that is not the take here the yeah. take is today when i interview a youngster he says my parents live in bombay i don't want a job outside bombay mm-hmm. or my parents are in pune my comfort zone is pune i want a job in pune mm. okay whereas these kids those days india was the place for civil services and so mm. on and anybody who joined the east india company would be obviously sent to india correct and these kids they were 17 18 or 19 when they reached india it would take 3 mm. or 4 months to reach india and okay. if they wrote a letter home four months going four months coming back it would take eight, eight months. months for one exchange with the parents okay now india at the time was practically uncharted waters hmm. the roads weren't there rails weren't there waterways weren't there much of it was actually chartered by them hmm. okay Correct. so these youngsters did some amazing work asia asiatic library hmm. who built it do we even know okay do we know right. the story of it do we know the story you know uh, 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 i think uh, which is the place uh, or or similarly uh, uh, darjeeling tea who made hmm. the name so famous okay hmm. so we don't know many of these stories which these youngsters did Correct. and they never knew that one day somebody will write about them or or the guy who uh, you know uh, uh, who cracked up ashoka spillers language hmm. pushing back india's history by 2000 years properly hmm. okay now all these kinds of youngsters they didn't know that somebody will write a book about them some day they never knew that they were doing something uh, fascinating correct but they did something out of the sheer passion of what they were doing what they took mm-hmm. as their work which became monumental okay yeah. so uh, the point is therefore uh, how do we take inspiration from such stories correct what inspired them and why do we lack that inspiration today i mean they yeah. could come away 10000 miles 
and uh, interactions taking forever. And in a country where people look different, they spoke different, they wore different clothes, they ate different food, they worshiped different gods, but they could still do all of this and mm -hmm. we can't do it. Correct, correct. So why, why do we want to get, you know, the more, more you get stuck to a region, mm. the more limited your options. And today it's getting worse. There are any number of engineering colleges mm. and government is even encouraging it further that there should be more engineering colleges in local languages. Mm -hmm. Sure. You have a great engineering college in Marathi mm. and you can't even speak English. Are mm. you employable outside Maharashtra? No. Or outside Karnataka or outside Andhra? If everybody had read, first of all, is there enough literature in Maharashtra mm. or in Telugu or in Tamil Nadu or in Karnataka to substitute the world's literature in science and technology? Not really. So the point is, if we, and on top of it, if we ourselves restricted further, mm -hmm. saying, I want to be in Pune because my parents are here, mm. you are shrinking your world for yourself. Correct. Okay, so you're limiting your opportunities for mm. yourself. So you're <laughs> making your world play smaller. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So actually, my question was that, uh, you know, one, how did you come up with such concepts? You know, as you mentioned, everything is so different from each other. And uh, second, in that interview, you had mentioned that uh, you got a little uh, negative feedback for games and teens play from a lot of people. So how do you handle that, you know, as an author? How do you I handle negative it. feedback? <laughs> I don't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, there will be negative. Anything you say which is bad about India. See, yeah. I have written it in very good spirit. Correct. Meaning, it's a wart on our face. Hmm. We need to be aware of it. Hmm. And if light laser surgery can remove it, give it a shot. Okay. <laughs> now, hmm. So it's holding a mirror to our ugliness. It doesn't mean that is all that is there to Indians. Correct. But you see, for uh, pseudo patriots, anything you say negative about India hmm. uh, makes me a bad guy. We will behave as we do, but hmm. nobody should point a finger at it. <laughs> Whereas I would imagine that I am trying to be helpful. I am saying that, look, in today's shrunken world where the whole world is on display on a screen, hmm. we come out looking much worse. When on the world ranking, India becomes the 140th country in uh, uh, ease of doing business or in terms of uh, c corruption ranking, hmm. uh, fifth from the bottom or something, aren't, don't we feel ashamed? <laughs> so, uh, you know, so therefore, if you keep on looking at uh, people who are criticizing, you know, as somebody said, Winston Churchill said, if you stop for every barking dog on the street, you'll never get to your destination or some such thing. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to do what you got to do. <laughs> True. So ignorance is the best policy in such case. But yes, if yes. you've done something wrong, which is pointed out by somebody, you owe it to yourself Correct. to address to correct it. Hmm. But not criticism for one's views. I'm, oh, I'm free to express my views. Correct. And I put it openly. Mm -hmm. Whereas these people, uh, people who criticize are all faceless critiques. Yes. You know. True. Then go and write a counter book yourself if you're so damn pissed off. <laughs> that is more difficult. That is more so difficult. long on words, short on action. The same, <laughs> same old story. <laughs> so it is good to have that kind of attitude, you know, <laughs> just uh, yeah. express your opinions and not worry about what the others are yeah. thinking. Yeah, I had no ulterior motive in saying what I wanted to say. So why yeah. should I worry? That's true. That's true. Oh, so, sir, I wish to ask you, for a person who breaks the shackles of limiting beliefs with his writing, what drew you towards collecting old padlocks in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was always a collecting kind of a chap. Even as a kid, I used to <laughs> collect those match cover, matchbox covers, yeah. stamps, coins, and so on. But they all fell out as I was growing up. And mm -hmm. then by accident, I came across some locks once uh, when the first one, when we were holidaying, my wife and I had just got married and gone to Gulmurg where uh, there was this old lock hanging on our uh, cottage, which looked very unique. So I offered to buy a new Navtal lock in exchange for that. And the uh, Chokidar was quite happy. <laughs> and I was also equally happy. So we had that. 
Then in Ahmedabad, I used to go to the flea market there on the Sabarmati river bed. So mm -hmm. I saw another very different looking log. Then my wife and I were traveling down south because we are both Tamilian, but we have never lived down south. Okay. So we had taken a car and we were just using temple architectures. Uh, though we are both atheists, uh, but <laughs> the temple architecture, but architecture is beautiful. Yes, it is. So we took those architectural points as our uh, travel uh, points mm -hmm. and landed up in my grandparents' uh, house in a village, Angarai, mm -hmm. near Lalgudi, off Trichy, about 12 kilometers off Trichy. Mm -hmm. So there was another old lock on the back door. So mm -hmm. I picked that up. <laughs> so by then I had three or four locks. They all looked very different from each other mm -hmm. and very different from what we think of as padlocks. Correct. So which caught my attention. I was interested in anything old and anything mechanical. Mm -hmm. So then it, I started collecting. I started going around and so on. But over a period of time, I didn't have to go around. The, 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 the intermediaries would reach out to me. They would give me a call. I'll say, okay, I'll pay you for the train. Or, uh, <laughs> or in later years, I'll pay you for the flight. You come oh. by, bring the logs, <laughs> and I'll see that, and so on. So that is how it kept on growing. Yeah, You've, you have around 700 logs now, right? Yeah, yeah, 650, 700. Where do you keep them? Is it in your home? Uh, yeah, it's all in the house. Uh, I, I, <laughs> um, maybe I'll, I'll WhatsApp you some pictures. Yes, please do. Definitely. Thank you. <laughs> I'll do that. So, sir, do you ever Actually, take... There's a, film, there's a film coming out on my yes, logs, yes. which is done by uh, Bangalore International Center. What I will do is, mm -hmm. and it should be out in the next four, five, six days. Mm -hmm. I'll send that link to you. Done. That'd be okay, great. I'll send yes. that to you. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of sending stand standalone pictures. Yeah. Okay. I will definitely watch it. I'm completely intrigued to yeah. know after your yeah. uh, description of them. So, yeah. sir, um, do you ever take a break from trying new things? And <laughs> if you do, what do you do in that time? I write fiction. <laughs> no, I okay. read fiction. Achha. I read fiction. I, I have, you know, most of these, uh, you know, whether it is Jeffrey Archer or uh, Grisham or uh, Lee Child or uh, Wilbur Smith or any of these are great uh, pastimes, actually. Okay. So, yes, I, I read that kind of a thing for lightening up. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I read uh, non-fiction more often. So okay, so even when because you because if I have to write, I have to read. If you don't read, you won't. You can't write. You can't write. So, that is true. Yeah. And and considering the fact that you have such varied uh, concepts on all your books, yes, I'm assuming exactly. you did they so all much research. research. You've done right. so much research about each topic. Yes. Correct. So, uh, sir, do you believe that networking is important with people? And if yes, how much, uh, how big of a network do you have and how do you keep uh, in touch with them in a meaningful way? Okay. One of my weak points in life, which is regrettable, uh -huh. is uh, I don't maintain networks very well. Okay. okay. <laughs> I have a large network. Obviously, when you're as old as I am, you you know a lot more people, right? In mm -hmm. that sense, yes. Okay. Correct. And also, if you are generally, if you are a decent human being, you will have a better network hmm. in the sense you would have done some nice things for others. Others would have done some nice things to you, which you want to return. And, you yeah. know, so that builds on itself. It grows on itself. But if you're a negative person who's not very nice to someone, like recently I found, you know, I was going for endorsements for my forthcoming book. Hmm. I was very, you know, gladdened at, you know, a lot of people agreeing to do the endorsement. Hmm. Okay. So it's in some ways karma coming back, you know. Right. So if you are not a very negative person, people respond to you positively. Hmm. So much of it depends on you. If you are a negative person, the network will be shrunk. Hmm. There is no artificiality to it. You can't say, oh, I am going to build a network. You know, you, you can't be artificial about it. Correct. Networking happens with genuineness. Your genuine liking for people. Hmm. If you don't genuinely like people, you can't be well networked. Throwing names is not networking. <laughs> Name throwers are the actually the worst networkers. Correct, correct, correct. True. So networking is about how decent a human being you've been, hmm. how positive you've been responding to others' needs in their times of need. And it's not a one or two time thing. It's, it's the way you should be. It's, it's a way of life. <laughs> it does not distinguish on who is your junior or senior. 
there are research associates who were working with me when i was a 27 28 year old guy hmm. and these guys were research assistants and i am and the badu were ceos today correct now if i treated them badly then because i was a professor and he was a mere research associate hmm. they would they wouldn't want to shake my hands today right yes so uh, that that's what i mean by karma coming back in the <laughs> sense uh, in my games and is black all it it for tat you get back ultimately what you yeah. do to others you know correct correct so in, so i would say that networking is very very important in the mm-hmm. human being but it has to be a way of life not a bag of trick hmm <laughs> you've given me so much to think about and uh, it's it's in a positive way because even i notice that when i'm interacting with my uh, guests who come on the podcast the more genuine the interaction is the longer uh, we are connected and uh, it it is when when you said it i just reflected upon it i'm i'm still in touch with all the guests who have come on the podcast and it is a nice feeling so uh, yes you have to be genuine you have to genuinely be interested in what they're saying rather than you know just for the sake of networking you just yeah. uh, connect yeah. with people it it makes a lot Not of a photo shoot of smiles yes no. <laughs> yes there should be a genuine connection so true Correct. i'm going to take this away uh, <laughs> so sir uh, what message would you like to give the up and coming youngsters who are uh, making it in their fields yeah i don't pretend to give any highfalutin advice i only tell people you'll feel good at the end of your life if you exploited your potential to the fullest and exploiting your potential to the fullest only means working genuinely working persistently and working hard wow to me that is a simple mantra of life <laughs> so true thank you thank you sir and uh, coming to the last and final question uh, this is something that i ask everybody because everyone around us asks, asks us to settle down beta when will you settle down so <laughs> i i have asked people this question what does being settled mean to you what do you feel sir i think uh, if feel... you feel settled you are settled if you don't yeah. feel settled you are unsettled <laughs> right that's true so it's it's all in the i feeling. actually feel settled in the sense when you have no regrets you are settled hmm okay right if you have regrets then you are not settled obviously correct because then you are looking for you are either worrying about missed opportunities or you are looking at some other opportunities which are not there in your life currently so that gives you a feeling of un- an unsettled feeling let us say mm-hmm. but if you have largely you know seven out of the 10 decisions that you made about your life mm-hmm. have been right correct and there are no major regrets knowing at you mm-hmm. okay uh and if you have a reason for doing what you are doing and if you are enjoying what you are doing you will feel settled so true <laughs> see parents can think you are getting married is settling <laughs> i don't know you know it's a, it's a decision which is fine either way you know somebody can choose to marry and be settled someone hmm. can choose not to be married and be settled hmm we married my wife and i but we chose not to have children and we still feel settled correct you know so the point is you are not having a regret hmm i think ultimately that's all that counts are you comfortable with yourself are you comfortable with being you see others will want you to be somebody else and they will have their definition of what it means to you to be settled correct <laughs> okay but you have to look inside and say all right what difference do i want to make is this the right way to do it mm-hmm. or should i be doing something else if so what are those things then why don't i do it why am i stuck here if i'm not enjoying my job mm-hmm. if i think my origin my real talent lies elsewhere and i can even if i make a little less money i'll be having more fun there as long as the money gives me enough to you know survive yeah manage the life yeah. yeah one is not saying money is not important money Correct. is important but uh, so if you have reasons reasoned reasons <laughs> which you have arrived at okay you are settled true true so uh, well <laughs> these were all my questions and what i have taken away from this entire conversation is that it's all about you as long as you keep learning you keep upgrading yourself 
you are settled you don't have any regrets uh you may genuinely your potential to the fullest yes so that is it, is, it is all from life. you correct it comes from within there's nobody no external force is going to help you be who you are yes. it's all you just have to within. expert your potential to the fullest often we do only 20 30 40% of it correct <laughs> so it is very important yeah so well these were okay. all my questions sir <laughs> thank, thank you amrita it's been thank such a so pleasure much. chatting with you and you asked some well. very very interesting questions you made my day thank you thank you sir you've made my day as well because uh, you gave me an opportunity to nitpick your brain and uh the knowledge that you have shared is so enlightening at least for me oh, and, in- and you you have this infectious uh, way of uh, eliciting information which has been very very gratifying thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir for doing have a good this good day with me. you too have sir. a good day and all the best take thank care you. stay safe you too sir bye bye, bye. bye.